folks, Teacher Cade here, and I'm coming to you from the very cold Arctic. And I'm going to introduce our very first book of the day. Can you guess what animal I'm going to read to you about? Some people call it the unicorn of the sea, and this is the narwhal. This is a tooth. Did you know that? The story that I'm going to read to you today is called Little Narwhal's Day. A Secret Creatures book by Angela Castillo. And what I really like about this very simple story is it's got wonderful illustrations and it introduces a lot of Arctic animals into this narwhal's day. The second story that I'm going to read to you is about a penguin. And the penguins we know do not live in the Arctic. They live in the Antarctic. That's right, they live in the South. And the story that I picked today is a wonderful story about a penguin named Garson. And it's called A Penguin for Hire, Five Fish a Day. And this story is about a penguin who just has to have purpose in life. Because you know what? We all need purpose in life, right? I hope you enjoy these two stories and I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye. Little Narwhal's Day, a Secret Creatures book, written by Angela Castillo, illustrated by Indira Zuleta, dedicated to all the children who love sea creatures. Little Narwhal wakes to sunbeams streaming through the cold Arctic waves. Good morning, my child, Mama Narwhal whistles. Little Narwhal clicks, good morning, Mama. In a flurry of bubbles, little narwhal rises to the water's surface and bobs among the chunks of ice. A ribbon seal and a puffin wave, hello! Two arctic fox kits tumble in the snow. Little beluga taps little narwhal's fin, wanna play? Little narwhal chases little beluga over the foaming waves. A school of arctic char swim by. They are too busy to play. The two friends play hide and swim among the coral reefs. After the fun game, little narwhal and little beluga float to the surface to breathe. Arctic tern fly in lazy circles, searching for lunch. Northern lights flood the sky the two friends dive back into the ocean depths. Little Narwhal and Little Beluga swim home on the watercolor waves. Fun facts about the Arctic secret creatures. The horn of the narwhal is really a tusk or tooth, much like an elephant's. They actually have two teeth, but most of the time only one grows into a tusk. Whistles and clicks are just two of the many sounds narwhals make. They use noises for echolocation to communicate and just because. For a long time, scientists believed tusks were used to break through the ice or for defense like a sword, but no one has seen narwhals do any of these things. Narwhals might use their tusks, which is very sensitive to test the temperature of the water surrounding them. Ribbon seals can move across the ice as fast as man can run for short distances. The beautiful white coat of an arctic fox turns into splotchy brown in the summer after the snow melts to help it blend into the dirt and rock of the tundra. Beluga whales are the narwhal's closest cousins and they have even been found sharing a family group or pod together. The oldest arctic char found was believed to be 40 years old. Narwhals can stay underwater for up to 25 minutes. They breathe from blowholes on the top of their heads. Northern lights can be many colors, including red, green, pink, blue, and white. Here are some links to the many topics also discussed in this book. Hire this penguin, salary five fish a day, by Aunt B. Illustrations by Flamina Kelnyby. Garson D. Penguin was a penguin of action. He had a very important job as a waiter at Captain Dandy's Seafood House. He brought the customers menus, drinks, and food. 
He was a hard-working, busy penguin, and he loved his job and customers. And everyone at Captain Dandy's Seafood House loved Garson. He had friends at the restaurant, all the fish a penguin could want, and at night he went home with Captain Dandy and Mrs. Dandy and slept in his own little bed in his own little room. He had books to read and a television to watch his favorite fishing shows. Life was penguin perfect. Then one sunny day, while he was serving lunch to one of his favorite families, Garson met a customer who did not love him at all, the health inspector. You have a penguin waiting on tables? She said in her loudest, sternest voice. Penguins are small, flightless birds that belong at the South Pole. They don't belong in restaurants and they certainly don't belong as waiters. She put her hands on her hips and scowled at Garson who was so alarmed, he dropped his order pad. You must fire that silly little penguin waiter at once. Garson was shocked. The other waiters were shocked. The customers were shocked. Captain Dandy, however, folded his arms, crossed his chest, and stood his ground. I am not firing Garson. He's a great waiter, and everybody loves him. Mrs. Dandy, who was the restaurant's head chef, came out of the kitchen with her rolling pin and stared down the health inspector. She was hopping mad. Stop scaring our penguin and leave my restaurant at once. Everyone in the restaurant cheered. The health inspector frowned. Then I'm going to close down Captain Dandy's seafood house right now. Penguins cannot be waiters. It's against the law. Everyone in the restaurant gasped as Captain Dandy and the health inspector stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, staring at each other. Garson watched them, feeling sad. He knew Captain Dandy would not fire him, but he could also see that the health inspector would close down this restaurant and all of his friends would lose their jobs. Garson knew what he had to do. Slowly, he took off his waiter's apron and folded it, put his order pad and pencil on top, and handed everything to Captain Dandy. He hugged everyone, Captain Dandy and Mrs. Dandy most of all, and walked out the front door. That night, Garson lay awake in his bed, tossing and turning, trying to decide what to do. He had to have a job. He was a penguin of action. He couldn't sit around the house all day, eating cod bonds and watching fishing shows on television. The waiting tables was all he knew how to do. And if he couldn't work at Captain Dandy's Seafood House, then he knew he wouldn't be able to work at any other restaurant either. What was a hard-working penguin to do? By the next morning, Garson had a plan. As Captain Dandy ate a bowl of oatmeal for breakfast and read the shipping news, and Mrs. Dandy ate eggs and bacon and read the cookbook, Garson sat across the table eating a bowl of fish sticks and milk and reading the Help Wanted ads. There were all kinds of jobs listed, nurse, teacher, truck driver, architect, and many others. He just knew that somewhere in the newspaper, there was a job perfect for a hardworking penguin of action. After breakfast, Garson took a nice cold bath, slicked down his feathers and polished his beak, put on the snazziest bow tie and set out to find another job Garson applied for oodles of jobs. He filled out forms, went on interviews, and was hired by many people who could see that he was a smart, hardworking penguin. But the jobs never lasted long. No matter how hard he tried, Garson was not just suited for some types of work. He couldn't be a firefighter because the big water hose tossed him around like a penguin doll. He couldn't be a policeman because he waddled too slowly to catch. He couldn't be a mail carrier because his feet couldn't reach the pedals of the mail truck. He couldn't be a janitor because he lost control of the floor buffer. To Garson, it seemed like he would never find another job where he fit in and belonged. One afternoon after he had left yet another job, he waddled down to the library to catch up on his reading and check his email. There he saw a sign in the window, Help Wanted. Garson's eyes lit up and his heart skipped a beat. Working in the library was his dream job. 
it was quiet and cool and he would be around lots of people and there would be books galore. He took the sign out of the window and waddled into the library at top speed to apply for the job. On the forms, he wrote his name and address, his job at Captain Dandy's, and where it asked how much he wanted to be paid, he wrote five fish a day. Garson sat and watched nervously as the head librarian read the job application, shaking his head every now and then and sighing, I don't know, a penguin working in a library? It's never been done before. Well, lots of libraries have cats, said the assistant head librarian. And there's a library out west that has a small pony working in the children's department. I think we should give him a chance. Just because it's never been done before with a penguin librarian? Doesn't mean there can't be one now. Okay, said the head librarian. Two weeks. We'll see how he does. But Garson could see that the head librarian had his doubts. Garson was a hit at the library. He excelled at putting away the books that belonged on the lower shelves. He got along with all the small children because he was their size. When one girl needed to do a report on penguins, he was an extra big help. He was friendly and helpful to all the patrons. Garson loved his job and everybody loved Garson. Everyone that is but the head librarian. When the two weeks were over, he sat down with Garson and shook his head. I'm sorry, Garson, but I don't think you can stay. You've done great here, but no library has ever had a penguin librarian before. It's simply not done. We can't hire you. So once more, Garson had to say goodbye to his friends at work. He was sad and disappointed. He'd been sure he'd been able to win over the head librarian. He emptied out his locker and handed in his badge. He hugged everyone, some of the kids twice, and then he made his way out the front door. But when he walked past the big metal book drop outside, disaster struck. As the assistant head librarian and her assistant were trying to unlock the book drop, the key broke off in the lock. They wouldn't be able to get the book drop open and the books were stuck inside. Oh no, said the assistant librarian. If we can't get the books out and we can't get them checked in. Her assistant gasped. That means the patrons who turned in those books will have fines. Garson heard them and knew what he had to do. After all, he was a penguin of action. With a mighty tug, Garson pulled himself up and squeezed headfirst into the narrow slot of the book drop. But halfway through, his tubby belly got stuck in the opening. He could see the books. They were just out of reach. He let his breath out and as much as he could, pulled in his stomach and pushed hard against the inside of the book drop. With a soft thud, he landed on the pile of books. Garson went right to work. One by one, he picked up the books and pushed them out through the narrow slot until the book drop was empty. Then he pulled himself up again and squeezed out through the slot, bracing himself to land on the hard sidewalk. Instead, he was very surprised to find he'd landed in a pair of strong, gentle arms. Garson looked up to find the head librarian smiling at him. Garson, you saved the day, he said, without your quick thinking and fast action. We would have never been able to get those books out of the book drop, and the patrons would have had fines. He put Garson on top of the book drop and said, I was wrong when I said the library shouldn't hire a penguin. You are exactly what we need at this library. You're smart, helpful, and imaginative. If you still want to work here, I think you would be a great librarian. I hope you will stay. Garson got the job, and once again, Life was penguin perfect.